Let's give a round of applause to Sir Charles Kerr for putting this on. Thank you, sir. Now, before I get to my um, topic, I just want to offer a testimony on how life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. Earlier on this month, I was driving home from teaching a yoga class, driving to Paul's church. Yes, I am a certified yoga instructor. You know, not all male yoga instructors have uh, are slim, have six-pack abs. See, I have something better than a six-pack. I have a keg. <laughs> and I use it wisely. Anyway, so I'm driving home. My car's engine, check engine light comes on. How many of you know what I'm talking about when that happens? At the most inopportune times. Then I start praying, okay. Let me drive a little bit slow. It's rush hour traffic. Then I start seeing smoke coming out from under the hood. I start to pray a little bit more. So Lord just make me home, but just help me get home. That's all I need. I have a meeting there. Right? I'll probably be late for it. Lord, just help me get home. And then, bang! Explosion. I stop my car, put the, uh, you know, the hazard lights on, falls, church police officer comes immediately. Fire department comes, no fire, nobody was hurt, fortunately. But the cooling system in my car exploded. My lovely. So, Call it in my insurance company, they send a tow truck. Well, the church police officer says, after I told them that my the tow truck would be there in an hour, which is around the average time, he said, well, we have a policy here for all church police. Uh, the tow truck has to arrive within 15 minutes, otherwise I have to call it in. I never heard that before. Huh. But you know what? He had the badge and the gun. All I had was the yoga mat. So I said, OK, fine. <laughs> So he calls it in. I cancel my insurance request for the tow truck. The same tow truck company arrives. Then the tow truck driver drops the bomb on me. Because the false church police officer called it in and not my insurance company, I had to pay out of pocket my half. So I'm on the phone with my insurance company. And the tow truck driver, he felt bad for my situation. He's on the phone with his supervisor. Long story short, my car got impounded for six days. And although my insurance company reimbursed me some of the money that I had to pay, the following Monday I still had to pay $860 to get my car out of the impound. Now for a nine to five like myself who was trying to get a speaking career off the ground, that was a major financial hit. But again, it goes back to that saying, life is just 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond. So I thought about it. I sat and I meditated. I asked the Lord, what's the best way that I can respond as opposed to react to this? Because I was talking to the police officer, nice guy, and I just assumed he was just doing his job. I said, you know what? The post, the pre-yoga me would have flown off the handle, would have gotten all emotional, you would, you would have had to put those handcuffs on me, you would have had to take me to downtown, which is like a couple of blocks away. But now I realize, you know what? Some things happen that are just beyond your control and you just have to roll with it. And I got a little inspiration. I decided to write a formal letter to the city of Falls Church and the police department explaining the situation and appealing that huge financial hit I took. Very diplomatic. I said, the police officer, God bless him, he was probably just doing his job, but I think me having to pay under those circumstances, eh, can you take a look at this again? Well, long story short, this past Thursday, I got a call from the chief of police of Falls Church, who told me, Mr. Martin, that officer, God bless him, he's a rookie, he made a mistake. That 15 minute rule only applies when police vehicles break down, not civilian vehicles. What happened to you should have never happened. So I'm going to make sure that you are reimbursed the full cost of your money from getting your car in the And she said, by the way, I hear you're a yoga instructor. I love yoga. <laughs> she actually said that. And she actually takes a morning class at the studio where I teach. Nice. God is good. God is good. So that ended wonderfully. 
So again, life is 10% what happens to us, 90% how we respond. And everything worked out. But to get to my talk today, let me all take you back to June of 2005. I was working in Washington, D.C. when I got a call that changed my life forever. My family called me and told me, told me that my father, Joe Martin, was in the final stages of prostate cancer. So my wife and I made the six-hour drive from D.C. to my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, where I sat with my dad, held his hand, and told him I loved him. Five days later, he was gone. How many of you have dealt with the death of a parent? As hard as it was for me, nothing could have prepared me for the days following my father's path. You see, the family was squabbling over his estate. Some asking who would get what and how much money, who would get what when, while others were demanding their fair share. Frustrated, I said, look, our father's body isn't even cold in his brain, and the only thing you all care about is getting paid? Shut up, Dutch, replied my eldest sister. You don't deserve any of Joe's money since he's not even your real father. It felt like somebody had hit me in the chest with a sledgehammer. Let me ask you this. How many of you are the product of an extramural <clears throat> affair. My whole life, I felt different from my older brothers and sisters. There was always this nagging feeling that I wasn't good enough. When I graduated from high school, I spent 10 years trying to fill that void. I became the first in my family to graduate from college. I began lifting weights to attract girls. I, I mean, to feel good about myself. <laughs> I even became a United States diplomat for the State Department. Again, first in my family. But deep down, I just wanted to show my older brothers and sisters that I was good enough. I desperately wanted their approval. I looked up to them. But once I discovered the deep, dark family secret that turned my world upside down, I desperately wanted to kill them. And boy, I hated them. No wonder they never included me in any of the things that they were into. No wonder they would oftentimes minimize my accomplishments. Oh, look, Dutch got to spread A's again this market period. Big deal. While magnifying my mistakes. Mom, did you see what Dutch just did? No wonder I've always been both the smart and handsome in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I had to talk to my mom about this. I had so many things to get off my chest and so many unanswered questions. I looked my mother in the eye and I said, Mom, I love you, but you've got some explaining to do. But only mom hadn't died of cancer in 2000. Five years before my father. Five years before Jim Martin died. As far as who my real father is, well, that's a secret my mother took to her grave. The worst part is that my entire family knew about this and would have never told me had my sister not opened her big mouth. Never mind the fact that I've never received a dime from Joe Martin's estate or that I haven't spoken to my sister since. For the next 10 years, I was tormented by one question. Who am I? How many of you have struggled with your identity? Although I was a happily married man and soon became a new father, I felt like a fatherless child who had been lied to his entire life. The irony was especially painful every time I would hold my then infant son Luther in my arms with tears of joy and sadness would start straightening down my face. I put up a good front, though. On the outside, things look fine. But on the inside, I was in hell. 
One day, I just broke down. Picture this. A grown man bawling his eyes out in a room full of strangers on a yoga mat. That's how my healing began. Yoga did more than make me more flexible and a little slower. It helped me construct a new identity by giving me the courage to finally break down and mourn the loss of my old one. Thanks to yoga, I didn't just learn how to stand on my head. I learned how to stand in my truth. And that truth is this. It's not your past that defines you. It's the future you create for yourselves and the future you create for others. Once I realized that, I redefined myself. And what about the business of creating the future that I wanted? In the process, I gained some valuable tools. The first tool helped me rebuild my marriage on a rock-solid foundation. Gratitude. The second tool helped me forge an ironclad bond with my son Luther. Unconditional love. The third tool sparked a burning desire in me to help others the way yoga has helped me. Passion. And all the great things yoga gave me, what's even better is what it took away. The need for anyone's approval. Now when I teach a yoga class, and I've been teaching yoga going on three years, I don't just put my students through a set sequence of poses. I inspire them to stand in their own truth. I reassure them that no matter what anybody says, they are good enough just as they are. And I remind them of a lesson that took me 20 years to learn. That it's not our past that defines us. It's the future we create for ourselves and the future we create for others. How many of you are ready to stand in your truth? And stand up. Stand in your truth right now. Well, in that case, I think I'll give my sister a call.